record. All right, it says we're live. So I think we're live. <laughs> Let's roll with Hello. that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, <live. laughs> Hello, people on Facebook. Hello, people in the webinar slash workshop. Very excited <laughs> to be here today. I'm Amanda and I've got Kirbano here with me. And we're going to be talking today all about uh, using your voice as a yoga teacher. And just for a little bit of context, we did a podcast episode together just uh, a couple of months ago. And you did some amazing exercises with me. We did some amazing, um, had amazing conversation just around using your voice. And it was so interesting for me because I know this is a tool that I use both as a yoga teacher and a podcast host. And yet I hadn't thought about the ways that I could actually be utilizing my voice. So I'm so excited to have you here, Kir Kirbanu. And I'm, I'm really excited for, for us to just dive into this and for you to share all of your knowledge as a voice coach and a wellness professional. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. And you know, the voice is my passion. And I love sharing what I know about the voice with other people, and especially with, um, with yoga teachers, because I know that, you know, any person who is a yoga teacher, and who is devoting themselves to this cause, essentially of wellness, of creating a space of wellness for others, they give so much of themselves, they give so much of their heart, um, and in that sense, you know, I think it's so important to be able to optimize everything we can that we're able to give 100%, but also from a space of ease. Um, and that's what I find is often missing in the voice and at least missing with many of the people and the yoga teachers who come to me for, for training um, is this sense of ease, is the sense of understanding, well, how can I use my voice in, a, in an empowered way to say what I want to say and to get the energy across that I want to get across and to touch my students in the way that I want to touch them and connect with people in the way that I want to connect in that moment, but from a place that's easy. Um, so yeah, this is kind of my mantra. And I was just saying this to one of my clients yesterday um, that, you know, everything with the voice, I think just like with yoga, you want to follow the way of ease, not the way of force. So this is like a mantra, you know, everyone who's listening, you can uh, put that one in your head, follow the way of ease, not the way of force. So how I came to be offering this work and kind of doing what I'm doing, just to give a short little background before I jump into the, to the tools that I want to share, um, is that, you know, since I was a little kid, I was fascinated with being a singer. So I just really wanted to sing and um I used to give like forced concerts to my grandparents and things like this when I was four. I'm a pro at I'm a little teapot. And, <laughs> um, but this journey with the voice and with self-expression, it wasn't a straight line. And I had a lot of hardship that I had to go through in my personal life in learning to let my voice out. And then professionally, because when I started teaching, I came to a point um, whereby I just was misusing my voice to the point that I lost it three times on three different occasions for over three months each time and had to actually had to learn how to speak again because um, it got so bad. So that combined with a lot of my friends being yoga teachers led me to this idea of why not sharing what I've learned as a professional singer and as a professional speaker with this community in a way that serves the yoga community. So today what I want to talk about is really kind of moving on from what I spoke about in our podcast together. Um, and it's just giving an overview about what the voice is and what are some tools that you can use um, as a yoga teacher to really become aware of how to use your voice in a healthier way. So for me, it's just like an asana. It's like if you are not aware of the mechanics of what make that pose work, then you're using it or you're doing it incorrectly. And then you don't get the benefit of that experience. You don't get the flow of that experience. And in the same way, if, you're not, if you don't understand how your voice works through understanding the mechanics of it, um, then it's really difficult to be able to bring ease into that space. But the cool thing is that it's very simple to learn how your voice works. Um, and you really just need to know I guess three or four things. And if you know these three or four things, and if you practice the tools I'm gonna to share now um, and do them consistently over time, then you'll develop a different understanding of your body and you'll begin to develop a different awareness of your voice. And this awareness is where 
the ease will come from and the certainty will come from when you're communicating with other people. So when I talk about the voice, I really divide it into these two things. And one which we're going to look at in more detail today is, um, or tonight or wherever in the world you are, <laughs> it's evening for me, one is the mechanical voice. So this is really the foundation of what is it, how does it work, what do I need to be aware of when I'm using it in order to use it correctly for optimal health and ease. And the other thing is the emotional psychological voice, and this is the thing that, or the fact that unlike any other instrument, our voice is inside of us. Yeah, the vocal cords are embedded in the muscles of the throat. It's all connected. So that means that if we're thinking a certain thought or having a certain emotion, if we're trapped inside of a certain belief, all of this is having an effect on our psychosomatic system. And this is having an effect, whether we like it or not, on our voice. It's affecting the muscles surrounding the voice. It's affecting the muscles that are connected to the breathing system. So it's all one thing. Um, and this is why I find also being aware of the effect of the psychological, emotional elements of the voice is equally as important if we're gonna use our voice freely, you know, and in the most empowered way that we can. So if I touch back on the house and the foundation of the voice, the mechanics of the voice, there are kind of of four things I like to talk about that you can use and that you can become aware of to help you just use your voice better. These are posture. As yoga teachers, we should be fans of posture. <laughs> um, their breath should also be fans of this. <laughs> they are the vocal cords themselves. So where the heck does the vibration happen? And the fourth, which I think is really important, especially for speaking, is resonance. And this is, where do I put the vibrations of my voice? So I'm gonna just briefly touch upon these four things and give a little tool um, that you can use for each of these four things. And I swear to you, if you would just do this consistently over time, it will dramatically improve the way you use your voice. And I see this in my students all of the time. It's always really exciting to see how they blossom um, under this information and under their practice. With posture, what is very important to think about as we're teaching yoga is, well, firstly, what I said before, the whole body affects the voice. So ideally, we want to have kind of like a meditation posture or a Tadasana posture. And this is the ideal posture for how our voice should be. I don't know about you, but like, even though I know these things in theory, and even though I've been doing yoga for 20 years, um, there is often in a day where I catch myself with an extreme case of duck butt or an extreme case of T-Rex head um, or both if I'm having a really good day. So <laughs> either of these things um, are really not helpful for us because they put a stress on the system. And when we use our voice, we want to do everything to avoid stressing the system again. The mantra is we're looking for ease. So if there's a closure on the system, if there's stress on the system, it's not ease. This leads to force and this leads to misuse of our voice. So we want to make sure I'm going to jump up and give you an exaggerated example of what I mean. You guys get to check out my butt. I hope you like it. Um, we want to make sure that we don't have any, you know, butt popping out like this. We want to really just bring the pelvis just like we would do in Tadasana, you know, push the pelvis forward a little bit, bring the bottom under. Now at the same time, we wanna make sure that the chest is not jutting forward. We wanna bring the heart into an alignment over the pelvis. And we wanna make sure, as I said before, that we do not have a T-Rex head going on. So we wanna bring the chin, the jaw, into a nice alignment over the heart. Again, think meditation, think Tadasana. This is what you're going for to have the best use of your voice to avoid placing any stress, stress upon your vocal system and to maximize how open that system is gonna to be to help you get your voice out with ease. Now, if we are teaching, and especially now at the moment for many of us who are teaching online, this can be a little challenging because 
if you're in a downward dog and you want to tilt your head to see what your students are doing, this is a problem because you're putting a massive stress on the vocal cords. I'll come to vocal cords in a moment, but just to know that if you're demoing while you're teaching, ideally only speak when you're basically in a Tadasana or a meditation pose. Now, I don't mean just stand in Tadasana and talk to your students. I mean, make sure your back and all of the alignment that I just showed you, make sure all of this is happening when you talk. So if you're in, in a downward dog, for example, and you wanna make your students aware of their breath or of the theme of your class or whatever you wanna do to connect to them in that moment, don't twist your head when you're doing it. You know, Just keep everything in a good alignment. If you're doing a twist, ideally speak before you're doing the twist and then twist and then come back, yeah? So think about your movement, your sequencing. And I recommend um, when it's possible to speak or to, to give the most instruction when you have this alignment of pelvis, heart, jaw, and like straight line through the crown, when you have this alignment and not when you're twisting. So this is the first thing to think about. The next thing to think about is breath. Now, our vocal cords work through air pressure. So this means that like a trumpet or a saxophone, we are actually wind instruments, which is kind of cool. Um, this also means that the breath is super important in how we speak. If we don't have adequate air pressure, when we're talking, when we're singing, what happens is that the vocal cords themselves have to take up the pressure. And this puts a really unnecessary stress on the vocal cords. And this will lead, if you do this over time, it's gonna lead to you like losing your voice or having like a really croaky voice kind of talking like this or getting really hoarse at the end of the day or just like completely like this or feeling like your melody is really unstable and your voice just doesn't sound clear, you know, because you're putting stress on the system. So again, like this mantra, we're looking for the way of ease. We're looking for how can I open my system up and avoid stress, avoid tension. So as I said before, twisting the head causes tension when we talk. Not breathing correctly puts the vocal cords under pressure causes tension when we talk, you know, and these are unnecessary. So what can you do and how should you breathe in a way that supports your voice? Well, good thing as yogis is that we know all about yogic belly breathing. Awesome. Use yogic belly breathing <laughs> in a very quick way. This is one of the best things you can do. Um, I like to take it a little step further and I teach my students about a thing that I have officially called the wee-wee point. So what is the wee-wee point? All right. If you, I'm going to stand up again, find your navel, and then you're looking to find a point about 10 centimeters below your navel. So if you work with chakras, this is around about the second chakra, the heart chakra. And this is also the point when you go to the toilet and you urinate, it's the point where the muscles push against your bladder. So we can work with this point, and this point is something that I call the anchor of your voice. It's kind of like the anchor of the breathing system. And by that, I mean that if we focus on moving this point and combining this point's movement with our inhalation, with our exhalation, then the rest of the system comes with us, yeah? The lungs come with us, like we get more air capacity when we breathe in. Um, the diaphragm is better controlled so that we don't lose the air so easily as we breathe out. Um, there's more space for the lung, the diaphragm to descend and more air to come into the lungs. So this is especially important when we're singing, obviously, but it is still something to be aware of when you're speaking. And it's especially important, for example, if you teach outside, um, or if you teach big groups of people without a microphone, because this point is also your volume control. So working correctly with correct breath um, helps you to have more power, helps you to have a stronger sounding voice, provided you're using the correct resonance. 
So let me give you an exercise that you can practice for this. Um, for the nature of the webinar or the workshop, I'm sitting up. But actually, when I work with people in, in the live space, I always recommend that you do this lying down to start with. The reason I, I say this is because when we're sitting up and when we're stressed in life, there's a tendency that we engage our shoulders when we breathe. Now, the problem is that, again, if we're moving the shoulders when we breathe, this causes an unnecessary tension on the throat. All of this is going to be really clear when I get to the part about the vocal cords. But for now, as I said before, we want to make sure that we have complete ease and no tension going on here. So if we're moving our shoulders up and down, this can lead to more tension, which is really, again, unnecessary um, on the throat, on the muscles here, and of course, then on the vocal cords, which will again lead to the croaking that I did before, the loss of our tone, and unfortunately, over time, just like I experienced, the loss of our voice. And this is really a problem, especially if you make your living from talking to people. So the exercise, make sure you're sitting up. I'm gonna stand so you can see me and I'm just gonna move the camera so you can see me a little bit better. Make sure you're sitting up in a good alignment. So like a meditation pose, put your hands or your fingers on your PP point. And what you're gonna do when you breathe in, I want you to push this point away from your body. And when you breathe out, I want you to draw this point back in towards what demo it for you so you know exactly what I'm talking about. I breathe in, push the point away. I breathe out, I draw it back in. Breathe in, push it away. Breathe out, draw it back in. So just do this for yourself in your own breathing rhythm. Once you've done it a few times, just take a little break to, you know, take a little pause. And then the next part of this is that we breathe in in the same way, pushing the point away from the body. But when we breathe out, we make the sounds of like an angry snake. So it sounds a little bit like So I'm gonna stand up and demo this for you. And then when you're ready, just try it with me. So again, making sure you have a good alignment. There's no duck butt going on here. Put your hands on your PP point. I breathe in in the same way I did before. And this time when I breathe out, I draw the point in, but with the sound I'm gonna do that again. I breathe in, push the point away. Breathe out, I draw the point back in. And just do that a few more times if you're joining along with me. Okay, so what this exercise does, excuse me as I move the camera again, what this exercise does is it helps to train you and to train your mind-body coordination to use what I call active breathing. Active breathing is the combination or the pairing of your in and out breath with this muscular movement that we just did. So the active in-breath is that you push the point away from your body the active out breath is that you draw it in. And this is really one of the best exercises that I can recommend for beginners um, to start to train 
the awareness of the breathing system, um, of the importance of breath, and of your, you activating your body's awareness of this when you're speaking. So because we're just doing a workshop and it's only 45 minutes, I really can't say any more about breath. I would normally go on for another hour. Um, but practice this. You know, I'm giving you kind of my four hot tips today, uh, tonight, this morning, wherever you are, um, to just kind of help you. And if you would just practice this, um, if you would be aware of your posture, like what I said before, if you would just practice this breathing, you know, do it in your Shavasana, at the end of your Shavasana, Hey, when you wake up in the morning or before you go to sleep at night, two minutes, lying down, become aware of this point. Consistently over time, you'll notice a difference, um, but it's important that you do the exercises. Okay, we're putting breathing on the shelf for, for, the, for the time constraint. Um, vocal cords, oh my God, what are vocal cords? Sometimes also known as vocal folds, um, they are membranous tissue um, that are really flapped over each other um, and they vibrate and this vibration causes your sound. So obviously, as I said, in order to have the vibration, we need to have air pressure. The air pressure comes through the awareness of our breathing system. In the best way, it comes unobstructed through good posture. But our voice works, the chords vibrate um, through the vocal cord with use, using the vocal cords. Now they look like a little V. They're connected at the front, separated at the back, and they are hanging out in your larynx. So in the throat here, kind of in the middle. What's really interesting about them um, is that they are connected at the back to floating cartilage. From my understanding, it's the only floating cartilage we have in our body. And this floating cartilage is embedded, is embedded into the muscles and the muscle system of the back of the neck. Now here we start to become aware of the importance of not being tense here. They're also, so the, as I said, they're connected to the, the cartilage is connected to the muscles at the back of the neck. The vocal cords are also, as I said, sitting inside the larynx. And if you know your larynx, your tongue is also connected to it. The back of the tongue connects. So now the whole system here starts to become interesting from a tension point of view. If your shoulders are up, like what I said earlier through the breathing, if you're twisting unnecessary, unnecessarily, like what I said earlier, because you're demoing a pose and you happen to have your head tilted. Um, if you like to grind your jaw, if your tongue is tense, if you have any tension in your throat or the back of the neck, like if you sit at a computer all day, all of these things, all of them will cause stress, unnecessary pressure and tension on your vocal cords. Over time, if you're a person who needs to speak a lot, you're gonna hear this in your voice. Again, it's gonna cause loss of tone, breathlessness, and in the end, unfortunately, it may cause vocal loss, which is obviously what we want to avoid. What does all of this mean? It really means that we need to, as best as we can, try to reduce the tension in our system from the shoulders or from below the shoulders up. Um, you know, I'm an Australian, so I like to say that imagine that everything above your shoulders is chilling out on the beach of Bondi, you know, under the sun with, if you like, mojito, alcoholic or non, you choose. I'll take the alcoholic version myself. But, uh, you know, just relaxed. This is the vibe we want to create. Um, and so we can help ourselves with this, obviously, in general, through becoming more aware throughout our day. Am I stiff? Can I relax? Is my jaw clenched? Can I relax it? Um, but also before we teach, you know, we can do some exercises to help release any tension because I think about using the voice like you're going to the gym or you're going to go for a run. Generally, or even in yoga, you know, generally we do a warm up first before we get into the more intense stuff. You know, I'm teaching a class in an hour. Um, I'm not going to throw them into my peak pose before I warm them up, especially not in winter. 
Um, and it's the same thing with your voice. If you're gonna teach a 90 minute class, if you have a day of teaching with four different classes and a few privates, if you're gonna give a workshop, if you lead retreats, if you teach on trainings, um, this is a lot. If you give podcasts, Amanda, this is a lot of talking. It's a lot for your voice. You know, those little tiny vocal cords are doing all the work. Um, and so we need to support them by supporting the system, again, to create more ease in the system by removing tension. So you can really, before you're teaching or before you're doing a podcast um, or before any like speaking engagement, just do a little bit of like, you know, stretching out the neck kind of thing. Just doing it kind of quickly at the moment to demo. One of my favorites is, um, you know, dropping the head and rolling the, sh the chin from one ear to the other ear. And again, for the time constraint, I'm just kind of quickly moving through this, but ideally you would take a lot more time than I'm doing right now. And just, you know, feeling the back of the neck, the shoulder muscles kind of release. A wonderful thing for bringing a bit more ease into the jaw is um, what I call chewing like a cow. Now, I know in Germany, it's actually made its way through the yin yoga scene here because I've had a lot of yin yoga teachers on my training programs <laughs> um, and they've integrated it into their yin yoga classes. Chewing like a cow is you imagine that you are a beautiful, big Frisian cow, you know, maybe on the Swiss Alps or in Canada, or I don't know, somewhere beautiful and it's sunny. And there's this green, delicious grass or maybe some fresh hay in front of you and you want to eat it. And you get your whole mouth and your whole tongue into this. Um, now, before I demo it, when you do this, it's important again to have the right posture. So please, please, please check that your neck is not jutting out. Bring yourself into an alignment before you do this exercise. Now, what it's going to look like is this. And you know, if you want to really get into it, you're bringing some sounds and a little tummy rub. Mm. 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 Lekka, lekka. Oh, sorry, I just said it in German. Tasty, tasty. <laughs> mm. And you should feel, so when you're doing this, as you saw, I'm really opening the mouth up, dropping the jaw, and then pushing the lips forward. So just to give you a close-up of my mouth, it looks like this. So I'm really working the lips. And if you have tension in your jaw, you are going to feel that a little bit. You know, I am a grinder at night. So I have like concrete in my jaw and I hear it through the sounds it makes when I do this exercise. I'm saying this because just watch out, you know, take yourself lovingly and supportingly to your limit don't go beyond it just like in any yoga pose but if you do this for a while you start to feel afterwards a loosening up here of tension this is a great thing to do before teaching so if i recap you know if you want to have a little practice that you could do before teaching one thing is to check your posture the other is to do that breathing exercise for maybe a minute or two the next thing would be to start, as Amanda's doing, <laughs> you know, stretching out the neck, doing a little bit of her neck, neck releasing. And the next thing would be to do a little bit of this jaw, you know, relaxing, opening. And if you do that, you'll already firstly be putting yourself into a much calmer state to teach your class. Um, I know that most of us are running between jobs before we go into classes. And then we want to give a really meaningful, heartfelt, impacting class. So to take, you know, five minutes to do a little warm up for yourself beforehand and to align your voice. Um, it's also very calming for you and it puts you into a great space. So the next thing that you could do, um, and I think we might have done this on the podcast, but I'm not sure, is what I call drive your tuk-tuk home. So <laughs> for this one, you're going to, again, get your alignment into place. And then you're going to make a sound like a BR. And it's kind of like if you're in Canada in the winter at the moment, I imagine. It's really cold. So. Brr, 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 brr. 
To do this, you wanna really relax the lips, make sure the teeth are not clenching, relax the tongue on the floor of the mouth. You blow out on the exhalation, you're blowing out through the lips. And sometimes it's enough just to have this going a little bit, but if you're able to, if you can get it going, then you can start to drive your tuk-tuk and it sounds like this. And I mean, it's a lot of fun. I love doing this in groups of people. Um, but what you'll feel if you do this afterwards is that everything here will be really relaxed, maybe a little bit tingly because it's quite like activated. Um, and doing this rolling of the voice, this ooh, ooh, ooh what you're doing is really um, activating the muscles that coordinate the vocal movement. So you're going from low to high and back down again in your vocal tone. And this is a really effective, simple exercise that you can do to really warm up your voice before teaching. Okay, so that's everything I'm gonna say about the vocal cords, even though there's so much more I could say, I'm getting sad. Sorry, I'm a little bit of a voice geek. I really love it, <laughs> in case you haven't worked that out by now. <laughs> um, the fourth thing that I said in the beginning, you know, posture, breath, vocal cords, resonance. Now resonance, I honestly think, is the most underused part and unaware part of our vocal system. If we could just become aware of resonance and where we place our voice, it would help us astronomically in terms of using our voice in a healthy way, um, of having a voice that sounds more powerful, that's louder, that's more colorful, that sounds richer, again, with ease. So again, everything is about ease. Um, in my experience, a lot of people, especially when they need to teach long days, they get to a point and they start to feel like, oh, my voice is getting tired. Like, oh, feels a bit tense here. Or maybe you feel like you're starting to get a bit clammy in the mouth or things feel, as I said, like they're closing. Or you might feel like you have a frog in your throat, you know the saying, I've got a frog in my throat. Um, and I've, in my experience, what often happens then is that we actually do the exact opposite thing that we should do. So we start to panic, shit, I'm losing my voice. I need to teach the rest of my class workshop training, panic. Okay, I need to force it out. I need to give more power. I need to push, push, push. And we do that. And what that does, now you know, is put stress on the neck, on the shoulders. It causes misuse of the breath. And all of this, basically it's like a negative spiral that we spiral outwards and make the whole thing worse and worse and worse and worse until we completely lose our voice. And there we are teaching and we're like croaking the voice out just to get through. And I know because I've done it and I know how stressful this is, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable for you, the teacher. It's uncomfortable for your students. Um, and it's completely unnecessary. And that's the sad thing. So again, with resonance, if we use correct resonance, you'll basically never have to do that again, provided you're breathing correctly, provided you have good posture, provided that you're relaxed here, that you're removing tension here. What the heck is resonance? Well, Resonance is where you place the energy, where you place the vibrations coming out of your vocal cords. If you think about a guitar, you know, you have the guitar, you have the strings, you have the big body of the guitar, and there's a hole. And the strings are vibrating above the hole. And the vibrations from the strings go into the body and they bounce around and they get amplified and they take on the color of the wood. And then they come back out through the hole and they sound fuller, richer. They come out with more ease. They come out with more volume. The same thing happens when you use the cavities in your head. So basically your head 
is the body of the guitar. <laughs> it is your resonance chamber. And so if you would think your voice up instead of pushing it out of your mouth, it would make a big difference because you would start to activate your resonance system. Just like yoga, just like learning how to do certain poses. It's like, oh, wow, when I do it like that, my body does that thing. You know, I've been in poses where I never thought I could do them. And suddenly I got the mechanics right and poof, I did the asana. And I was like, wow, I got, I got it. I felt it. It's the same thing with your voice. You just need to open it up and use it in the correct way. So let me give you at least one little tip for how you can work with your resonance. And for this one, we're going to make a sound like an HM. So like, hmm, like I'm thinking, you know? When you do this, again, it's important that you relax the throat, not the throat, sorry, the jaw, and that you relax your tongue. When you make the sound, see if you can imagine it kind of vibrating like a big bowl of energy here. Yeah, so just like imagine it vibrating in your head here. So what we're gonna do, we take a breath in, have good posture, and then we make the sound. As you breathe out. And now do this a few more times. Breathe in. Breathing out, make the sound. And do it a few more times in your own breathing rhythm. When you do this, you just want to keep imagining that the energy of your voice is really vibrating here. Now, what you can do is very lightly take your index fingers and press them softly into the side of the nose and also the top of the lip. Don't press hard, just press really lightly as you're doing the sound. And if you're doing it correctly, you should be able to feel the vibrations with your fingers. So I'll demo it for you. You can also put your hand on the top of your head. I have my headphones on, but you've really put it on the crown. And see if you can feel the vibrations. If you can't feel them, don't panic. It generally just means that you're maybe a bit tense somewhere. It's kind of like opening a door on something. And I often say this to my students, becoming aware of how your voice really works and learning to use it in the optimal, optimal way requires you to open your awareness onto things that you probably have never been aware of before. Um, and that's the point. And that's what these exercises will help you do. You know, you become aware of how to breathe connected to that deep point. You become aware of letting go of tension in the shoulders, in the jaw, in the tongue, in the back of the neck, in order to make more space and, and ease for your vocal cords to vibrate without any tension around them. You become aware of this idea of the resonance, yeah? And having resonance like a guitar, but having it in the top of your head. And rather than forcing the voice out, really feeling the voice up. And through these exercises, really getting the feedback. Oh shit, when I do that, I, I feel the vibration. You know, even if it's tiny, keep doing it. It's like, I remember when I did my first down with dog. Oh my God. I mean, <laughs> it was a mess. It was a train wreck. <laughs> I mean, when I tried to do my first forward fold, I couldn't even bend, like barely. You know, but okay, you have a moment. You get the idea. Oh, okay, so if I do that a little bit more, Maybe next time I can go a little bit deeper into it. Maybe next time I can open up a little bit more. And over time, you become a yogi. You know, over time, yeah, I can down with dog. Cool. You know, but it wasn't like that in the beginning, was it? It's the same thing with your voice. You know, we need to learn to become aware of the system. And we need to take the time to practice some of these exercises that I just shared with you to help us develop that awareness so that then when we go into life, we're not doing the same bad behaviors 
different mistakes over and over again. Actually, we start to use the voice with an open system and we learn to use the voice with more ease. And this is the way that we can use our voice in an empowered way and also the way that we can use it in the long term for health. So because of the timing and because I do have to run to teach a yoga class that I cannot be late for, <laughs> this is all I'm really able to share with you today. I was help, hoping to say something about the emotional psychological voice because this has a lot to do with um, how we create space and atmospheres um, using our voice. And that has a lot to do with, you know, the themes for your class, how you want to motivate your students and also how you connect with your students during sessions. Um, but yeah, I'm so sorry. I didn't have time for that. Um, but I do want to say, you know, if you want to learn a little bit more, um, I do have an online course. It's um, called the voice course for yoga teachers. And some of this information that I've shared with you is like the very beginning bits um, of what I'm sharing in the course. And for everybody who signed up for this webinar, um, for the members of Amanda's community who wanted to be part of this today, I'm actually offering you just for the next five days, 30% um, off of that course. So have a look. I think the link is in the chat box and maybe Amanda, if you're willing to send that out to people in an email um, with this replay link, that would probably be really cool too. And that way, if you're interested, um, you can learn more about your voice and you'll be able to do the exercises and watch the videos and go through the workbook um, at your own pace. Um, yeah, so I hope, however, that I was able to share a little bit about your voice with you, give you a few tidbits that are helpful for you. Um, and I really recommend practicing these exercises. Um, yeah, and of course, if you have any questions, um, I've also sent my, my newsletter and my webpage that you can connect to me through. And I always love to answer questions and connect to people, especially yoga teachers, because I know how much we're giving and I love to support the people who are trying to create something special in this community. Yeah, Amazing. so thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. That was so great. Those, uh, those everything you talked about, all those tips and exercises were really wonderful. And, you know, I'm not actively teaching a lot right now. Uh, mostly working on the business side of things, but so much of this is relevant to me in my business because I use my voice every yeah. day. And I think that, you know, for so many yoga teachers, yoga coaches, anyone in the wellness profession, we're, we're speaking constantly and our voice is our yes. tool. It is. And it's so underrated. And that's what makes me so frustrated. I mean, I teach a lot now on training programs because I'm actually highly disappointed by the lack of correct vocal information and teaching that's allocated um, to the voice in training programs. It's, it's mind blowing to me um, because it is our tool. It's exactly what you just said. And if we don't have it, if we lose it, if we're for whatever reason teaching, for whatever reason doing this, if we're earning our income through it, we need it to work and we need to look after it. And let's face it, we're talking about 30, 40 years of mm -hmm. use. This is not something that should be neglected, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I 100% agree. I was thinking too, you covered so much good stuff around sometimes if I'm teaching like a live training or something, and then I have podcast interviews like the next day or even that same day, it's like by the end of the day, I just feel like my voice is dead. So it's good to have some tools in my toolbox to, to keep it alive because nobody likes listening to, you know, a yoga teacher, a podcast host that's croaky. <laughs> no, and that's the problem. And it's like what I said, it's like, totally unnecessary and that's the sad that's like the most frustrating thing for me because it's like I know so many people are experiencing this and experiencing this frustration and just kind of taking it for granted like oh I just spoke too much and my voice is out it's like it doesn't have to be like that <laughs> why <laughs> yeah 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 and thank you Andrea I just wanted to say thanks so much too it's really wonderful that you're joining us in the live session so thank you for for being here it's, it's awesome yeah yeah, and thanks to everyone who joined on Facebook Live. Of course, if yeah. you have questions, make sure you reach out. And thank you to you, Kirbanu. I'm really excited that we were able to do this. And Me too. Yeah, thank you for your time and, and all this, this goodness. I hope that your class goes really wonderful tonight for thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to be practicing Ford Benz. I feel like a Ford <laughs> Bender. <laughs> nice yeah that thanks so much awesome. Andrea well I'm sending big hugs and love to everybody in the community thank you so much and feel free to get in touch if you have any questions I'm really happy to to answer them thank you Amanda for making the space for me today 
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And thanks for everyone watching. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.